My name is Lindsay Walker. I'm the product lead at the Starling Lab for Data Integrity. The Starling Lab for Data Integrity is a research lab co-founded by the Stanford School for Electrical Engineering and University of Southern California and the Shoah Foundation. What we've coined is something called authenticity by design. It's our approach to ensuring the provenance and authenticity to digital media. We work in journalism, law, and history. We prototype tools and principles to bring historians, legal experts, and journalists into the new era of Web3. We're an academic research lab, and we innovate with the latest cryptographic methods, decentralized web protocols, and we meet the technical and ethical challenges of establishing trust in our most sensitive digital records. Starling uses open source tools, best practices, and case studies to securely capture, store, and verify digital content. We have applications across news media, historical preservation, legal accountability, and the potential use cases for this framework are, are endless, even though we tend to work in these high stakes areas. The framework we use is capture, store, and verify, and we prototype tools and workflows with different partners to show how this can work in different contexts. Some of the things we do for capture is we prototype mobile apps or camera firmware to authenticate digital, uh, digital content at capture. So when a photo is taken, a piece of audio is recorded or a video is taken, we can authenticate exactly what is captured and when. We also research how to use advanced cryptography and decentralized networks to securely distribute and govern content over time. Um, decentralized systems are really key in our methodology because it means that not just one person has access to content, it puts it in the hands of many instead of a few big powerful tech companies. Starling also experiments with immutable ledgers and that's how we register digital content and archive it as well. We enable experts to be able to audit or verify the provenance of the digital media that we have captured and stored. Our founding director is Jonathan Doten um, and he started this project a few years ago um, documenting the transition between uh, presidents where there was a lot of mis and disinformation coming to the surface. Ann Grimes is the Director of Journalism Fellowships and she uh, is a lecturer at Stanford University. Benedict Lau is our CTO. Yurko is our Head of Engineering, keeping everything running smoothly. Adam is our COO with a uh, diverse background in journalism and uh, human rights. Basil Simon is our Director of Special Projects. He probably wouldn't be happy with this picture that I put up here, but it's the only one he gave me. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm the product lead, so I tend to work in between our engineering team and the fellows in journalism, sometimes law, and history to help the prototype these workflows and use new tools. Alicia Seam is our principal engineer and innovation lead. She's a brilliant electrical engineer from Stanford University that's helping drive uh, new advances in authentication. So, some examples of the work that we've done. We've worked with several big um, news organizations as well as local news organizations to prototype how we can use this technology in different ways. We also have worked with several hardware partners, including um, the Exodus HTC One, uh, which has a secure enclave for signing uh, authenticated media, as well as other uh, companies like Canon that have put authentication into the hardware of their, their cameras. Through this workflow, we store things and we register them in distributed storages and publish these in case studies and journalism articles, as well as um, submit some of this evidence in an international criminal court. We uh, demonstrate the way that you can use Capture, Store, and Verify in news articles and show how we can register on different types of blockchains and preserve in dis different decentralized systems. Many of our examples can be viewed in online news articles or microsites. We, some example, other examples of our work include um, the Four Corners project, which is another piece of software that we've worked with that shows authentication information, um, where we did an article uh, documenting misinformation um, in Brazil around climate change. One of our uh, biggest and best uh, projects was the DJ and the war crimes. Um, the DJ and the war crimes was a deep, uh, deep hitting investigation with uh, photojournalist Ron Haviv who had documented war crimes 
during the Bosnia war um, and also had evidence of a war criminal that was walking around uh, free to do as he wished. Um, so he had documented evidence of these war crimes, but he'd never been held accountable. Starling Lab partnered up with Ron Haviv and Rolling Stone in order to um, not only archive and prove the authenticity of his photographs, but also use other investigative methods to help prove that um, who this person was, that, the, that these uh, sequence of events had occurred, and eventually um, reopened the case and brought this person to justice. Um, the DJ and the war crimes used not only authentication techniques, but investigative, cutting end investigative journalism to piece together a story that hadn't truly been told before. On this website, on rollingstone.com, you can explore the archive of authenticated media. Uh, we had photographs um, from the Bosnian War and the investigative journalism piecing this together to prove um, what happened, where it happened, and who was there. We also used cutting-edge uh, ZK-proof technology for some of the records that we uncovered. As an example, um, we, had, we had captured some uh, online documents that included uh, payroll information about several people that were part of the Archon's Tigers, which was this group of essentially criminals. However, there were certain people on that record that we didn't want to um, expose and publish in the archive. Using ZK-proof technology, we could prove that we had redacted certain pixels of that document um, while still showing the evidence that we needed to bring this um, publication to life. As you can see, we put together this massive authenticated archive with 1,994 documents, 40 images, and 183 authenticated web archives. In this archive, you can see the chain of trust. Um, you can see who has uh, cryptographically attested to this evidence. Um, you can see more, you can see asset de details, and you can see all the information that you need to verify that these pieces of digital information are what they claim to be. This is the example of that these redacted um, images using zero knowledge proofs. So with these zero knowledge proofs, we are able to simply um, reveal the names of the people that were part of this investigation while keeping the other people uh, on the payroll anonymous. Here's another example of some of the archives we captured. So one of the big things that we do besides preserving photos and journal journalistic pieces is um, scrape archives from the web. Um, many times these archives are really subject to something called link rot, they disappear. Um, since 2013, 38% of what is on the internet has disappeared, 38% of websites. Uh, oftentimes in investigations like this, it's really important to not only capture the web page as it existed, but to also be able to prove it is what we say it is. So. Um, with this piece of evidence, we're able to scrape things from websites, which most certainly would be taken down as soon as the people figured out that they were being investigated for war crimes. Um, and we're able to prove that it is what it says it is. So a web archive will capture not only what appears on the page, but it captures all the context with it. It timestamps it. It tells you which um, web website it comes from. It uh, captures all the code that you can see on the front end of the page. It cryptographically hashes it and it signs it um, for preservation. I really highly encourage you to just Google the DJ and the war crimes where you can see this amazing archive um, and a documentary about Ron Haviv and the work that he did bringing this war criminal to justice. <laughs> if you dig a little bit deeper in this archive, you can see all of the um, decentralized technology that we use for this. So we use open timestamps to timestamp when we captured uh, things like web archives, as well as the photographs. We registered uh, hashes of this digital media on three different blockchains. That's Numbers Protocol, uh, Avalanche, and then Litecoin using the ISCN protocol. And um, we also used a standard called C2PA, which helps uh, preserve the provenance of a piece of digital media from the minute it is captured and hashed. Um, until it is brought to the, the public. This is our probably sh most shining example uh, that has won many awards, including an Emmy, Emmy nomination for the groundbreaking investigative journalism that was done. 
Another project that we're, we are working on is Project Dokaz. Um, project Dokaz aims to witness what is happening in Ukraine. The Ukraine conflict is a big source of mis- and disinformation, as well as claims of false news that's made by AI. So what we do as a part of Project Dokaz is um, we use decentralized technologies and we use that capture, store, verify framework to document and preserve war crimes committed during the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, again, we use the Capture Store Verify um, framework in order to allow people who might be uh, citizen journalists or people who are on the ground to capture things that might be susceptible to mis- and disinformation. Um, an example of how this works, you could take the Proof Mode app, and the Proof Mode app is a special app that collects um, all kinds of metadata. Um, it captures the uh, it captures a photo, but it also captures the full context of the photo. It'll capture the GPS location of where that photo is taken. It also pings off of cell towers to collect that metadata. And um, each proof mode photo is signed with a GPG key um, so that the identity of the person capturing it and the hash of that media is immediately preserved. We then um, take it and store it in decentralized systems. Uh, we have also have our team of engineers cryptographically sign it uh, and, and batch it up. We store this uh, both in decentralized systems, if it's publicly available information, or for private and redacted information, we'll archive it on Filecoin. Um, then we can use this evidence uh, to submit cases to the International Criminal Court. And uh, we have all this information that can be verified later on. All right. I'm going to talk real quick about some of the cryptographic tools that we use. Cryptographic hashes are key to our capture store verify practice. Uh, practice. A cryptographic hash is just a one-way function that enables you to create a fingerprint from it for a piece of digital media. The reason a fingerprint is a good metaphor is that, like a fingerprint, you can um, immutably tie it to just one person or object, but the fingerprint would not reveal any information about what it is. So. This cryptographic hash can be registered on chain to check that a piece of digital media is pixel by pixel exactly what was first registered, but it is non-reversible and you can't identify content. Um, with cryptographic hashes, you can use any data as input, any ones and zeros that you feel like, uh, and then there's always a fixed size output. It's non-reversible, so if you have the cryptographic hash of a, an, an image, you can't necessarily see what the image is. That means we can register it on chain without uh, revealing what it is. Um, but it and it preserves a record without revealing sensitive info, but it also lets you know, hey, did somebody doctor this image since the original one that we put on chain. We use digital signatures, if you're familiar with this, uh, asymmetric keys. Um, it proves that a message or a file or a change uh, or an update, so we'll sign media, but we'll also sign database updates. It comes from a specific identity. Um, that Starling Lab was the one that uh, signed a piece of media, and they're attesting that this is real. It can't be forged. Um, it also allows data to be safely delivered over any channel without you worrying about has it been modified in room. The original source can be verified, and you can kind of pass on trust in digital media to anybody. We use certificate authorities to sort of notarize a piece of uh, information. Uh, we use a something called Let's Encrypt, and we cross-sign these things to um, sort of verify the identity of, hey, this person signed this. We're notarizing. We're also signing it, and we're saying that this, we're this identity. Essentially, it's a way of attesting that the person signing it is who they say they are. Encryption is also a big thing. A lot of times we will collect information that is sensitive or might have uh, personal, personal identifiable information. So we use encryption before we, um, for instance, archive things on Filecoin. And then, of course, our blockchain registration and archiving. So the approach that we take is that we hash this digital media, we sign it, and we register it on chain. It's also archived on Filecoin. Uh, also, as a part of the decentralized philosophy, we put copies of uh, any data that is non-private uh, on IPFS and storage, and sometimes we also encrypt it and put it on there. So if needed, in the future, um, there's multiple records held by multiple people and not just one centralized authority that you can check against. So let's take a little bit, uh, look at one of the case studies as well. So some of the tools that we use, Proof Mode is a really great open source app from Guardian Project that you can use if you are ever in a situation where you want to prove um, what you are seeing, what you're capturing, the photo or video is what you claim it is. 
uh, Numbers has a capture app. And Starling Lab has also uh, created forks of this that help us with our workflow to um, easily pull this, pull this into our backend and preserve it. Some other tools that I can really recommend is if you're creating web archives, there's a tool called Web Recorder that captures that full context of a web page and cryptographically signs it. And the Wayback Machine is a really great resource that you can use as well. Uh, it's sort of a free public service that, that is archiving, trying to archive everything on, on the internet. So the traditional framework of storing authenticated data for journalists and other people was information is captured, you put it on an SD card or a computer, and you have to put trust in, in a person to record where, when, and other information. And it's sent securely, but it's usually stored in one location. Um, what we've been seeing a lot in journalism is in this one location, for example, Vice News might not uh, decide to publish or make this available anymore, and that becomes problematic. What Starling does instead, um, we capture not only the photo, but the date, time, location, and more. We store with a unique cryptographic signature, and we also validate who sent it. So we do checks on this as soon as it comes into our back end for storage. Is this what it says it is? Um, the Starling framework continues where once we've proven what the data, the data is, what was originally captured, we package it um, in a special way so we can um, store it with a unique un immutable co content identifiers. We store it in distributed storage. Um, depending on if it's sensitive data or not, we make it able to be retrieved and published and we can track and verify changes using standards like C2PA. Distributed storage and archiving is really important, again, because it makes it more resilient to link rot. That's when websites inadvertently to get taken down. Maybe the company goes out of business. Maybe a country wants to censor what's on their databases. Um, sometimes things fail. Uh, we want to make this as widely available as possible. Uh, vendor lock-in, if you store on one cloud provider, they might charge you egress fees to even get it out. If you put it in distributed storage, it's a really good solution against that. And any time that you might be in a situation where this data might be censored, uh, distributed storage is a good solution. Please welcome to the stage your host, Nick Day. Oh. Okay, I think I'm going to cut it off there. Welcome but I'm going to go to the end. Well fed and watered. Oh. Thank you for, for listening uh, about Starling Lab. You can visit, find more information at starlinglab.org. A lot of uh, more resources are at linktree, link.tree slash Starling Lab. And um, you can contact me. My name is Lindsay Walker, and I'm the product lead at Starling Lab for data integrity. Okay.